Hi, this tutorial covers uh, false positives and false negatives. So let's just start with a situation. So suppose you need to bring your dog to the vet for a Lyme disease test. Um, if you're not familiar with Lyme, uh, Lyme disease, Lyme disease is a common tick-borne disease. So if you spend a lot of time outside with your dog, um, it's often good to check, check for ticks. Um, so the test then for the disease has two outcomes, either a positive test or a negative test. So after the vet performs the test, he's either going to read the test as being positive or negative. A positive test would indicate that Lyme's disease, Lyme disease is present in the dog. A negative test would indicate that Lyme, Lyme disease is not present in the dog. Uh, most, most tests of this type are not 100% accurate, so sometimes you will um, get incorrect or false tests. Okay, so let's just take a look at um, basically the four different outcomes that can um, that can happen with uh, with the dog and the test. All right, so um, I have it broken down into basically two categories: either a positive test, and negative test, and then whether the disease was present or the disease was not present in the dog. Okay, so let's think about which of these outcomes would be good outcomes, which would be bad outcomes. Okay, so if we take a look at this first one, a positive test when the disease is present, okay? That outcome is good, okay? If the dog actually has the disease, you wanna make sure, you know, it, it's good if, if uh, they test positive, so then you can get, actually get the treatment that, that the dog needs, okay? Now, if we look at this one, a positive test if the disease is not present, okay? This is bad. Okay, um, and what this, this is, so we're really commit that we'd be committing an error here, so there'd be a flaw in the test, and since this is a positive test that is incorrect, what we do is we call this a false positive. So that's a false positive um, test. Okay, um, now if we take a look now at, at the next one, a negative test when the disease is present. Okay, that's also a bad outcome. Okay, you don't want the dog to test negative if they actually have the disease. In that case, the disease might spread. Um, the side effects may continue. Um, so this is also a bad outcome. And since this is a negative test that was incorrect, we call this a false negative. Okay, and then finally, a negative test when the disease is not present, that's also a good outcome. Okay, so kind of to formally define false positive and false negative. A false positive is, a t um, is when a test indicates that a condition is present when it actually does not exist. And a false negative is um, when a test indicates that a condition is not present when it actually does exist. Okay, and both of these two things have different repercussions. Um, again, if you get a false positive, um, it's going to test the, uh, the the dog is going to test for Lyme disease when it doesn't actually have it. Um, so what, what's going to happen here as a consequence is um, the the owner is probably going to end up having to pay for medication, which the dog doesn't need, um, spend more time um, treating the dog. Um, and then a false negative, probably in this situation, is a little bit worse. Um, the dog won't get treatment for the disease and it might spread. Um, all right, so let's take a look now at kind of looking into these um, different types of um, mistakes that the test can make again. So now suppose that 10% of Lyme's disease tests are positive and that 10% of dogs tested actually have the disease. So what we're kind of thinking about is, so there's a 0.1 um, chance that, it, the, that the, they're going to end up with a positive test. So that means 0.9 for a negative test. And if 10% of dogs actually test to have the disease, that would be 0.9, or 0.1, and that would be 0.9. Um, so it, it seems like, well, that must mean that all 10%, um, or the 10% that are testing positive must be the 10% that actually have the disease, okay? But if we um, kind of consider all of these outcomes here, it's not quite going to be the, be the case. So if there's a 90% chance that um, the disease is not present and a 90% chance of a negative test, if we end up multiplying those, that's going to be an 81% um, chance there. So there's a, an 81% of the tests will yield a negative test when a disease is not present. 
Okay. Um, if we multiply these two together, that would be 0.01. This would be 0 0.09. This would also be 0 0.09. Okay. So what this means now is that only 1% of the tests will yield a positive test when the disease is, isn't present. Okay. Um, and then actually we'll have a 9% false positive rate and a 9% false negative um, rate here. So we can see that based on this test, you know, we're going to have 18% of our tests um, being a mistake. So um, it, it's kind of important to look at these with, with a pretty watchful eye um, because due to the presence of false positives and false negatives, um, it's, it's really important to uh, carefully interpret the results of any of these tests. All right, so that has been your tutorial on false positives and false negatives. Thanks for watching.